In this video, I'm going to show you a couple ways you can align masters without integrating them for those times that you need discrete masters. One is quick and dirty and entirely manual. I'm very comfortable working manually. I find it faster than messing with tools sometimes. And in a photo editor like Affinity Photo, it's quick and easy to do. The other method is going to apply some of PixInsight's powerful tools. So let's go ahead and get started. On the PixInsight desktop above, you can see two separate images of the Horsehead and Flame Nebulae. The dual band above was shot in the middle of October, and the broadband below was shot in the middle of December. As you can see, these two images are almost 180 degrees off from each other, and they're fairly different compositions on top of that. The image below shows a great deal more of the curtain over the Horsehead Nebula on the right. Now, let's say that I am wanting to create a complex image out of these two masters, but I don't want to integrate them because the various structures in this image have very different degrees of brightness. The lump star itself is a mini nebula and is very bright. And the flame nebula is a bit brighter, but not too much brighter than the horsehead nebula. And there are also a few very bright stars in there. So let's just pretend that for that reason, I decide I want two separate images that I can work with as separate layers in a layer-based photo editing application such as Affinity Photo or Photoshop. I already have my two separate masters, they're right there on the left. But so that they mesh in later editing, they'll have to be aligned. Fortunately, that's not too hard. PixInsight offers a tool to accomplish that quickly and easily. It's called the Dynamic Alignment Tool. Now we're going to have to make some manual selections and corrections when we use the Dynamic Alignment Tool. And that'll be just a little tricky with the images almost 180 degrees to each other here. So I'm going to start first by evoking the fast rotation tool and just selecting 180 degrees and rotating the upper image so it roughly matches the lower image. It'll just make it easier to work with overall. Now let's go ahead and open up the dynamic alignment tool and get these images aligned. Open dynamic alignment. Pick which image you want to be the reference. In other words, the image that you want the other image to rotate to match. When you move your cursor over the reference image, the cursor will say 1. Just click anywhere on the image. Then go to the other image and your cursor is going to say 2. Click on it. Number 2 is going to be the image that rotates and perhaps stretches a little to fit and match image 1. Once you have designated which image is the reference, image 1, and which image will be altered, image 2, go back to image 1 and select a star on image 1. The star should be small and dim. You don't want to pick a very bright, large star that occupies a bunch of pixels. Small stars give better precision. What you're doing now by selecting a star is telling the dynamic alignment tool what stars it's going to use to align the two images. When you select the star, the dynamic alignment tool should place a green X over the star that you selected. And there should be a green X over the star on the other image. However, often the dynamic alignment tool will fail in the first one to three tries. It's easy to fix this. Just go over to the second image, hover your mouse cursor over the green X. After a moment, it should become an arrow. Well, really more of a small triangle, but we'll just call it an arrow. Once it becomes an arrow, you can then drag the green X over to the correct star on image two. Now rinse and repeat. Pick five to 10 more stars. The more stars you pick, the more accurate the image alignment will be. After you have about seven to 10 stars selected, go ahead and hit the checkbox and activate the tool. In a moment, a rotated and aligned version of image 2 will appear, and unless you have changed the default options, it'll have the suffix registered. You can test the alignment by dragging the plates over plate 1. The plates will snap together perfectly at the frames, and as long as you continue to hold the mouse button down, the image of plate 2 will be semi-transparent so that you can see how it lines up with image 1 below it. You should see a perfect alignment. All right. Now let's pop over into Affinity Photo and do this the quick and dirty way, otherwise known as the manual way. If you decide to do this manually, you might find it to be a little tricky at first, but I guarantee that with a bit of practice, this goes quickly and easily. So much so that often I just manually align plates. I find it faster than messing with the tools in PixInsight. And it can be done with extreme accuracy because we can zoom in right down to the pixel in Affinity Photo and match up our alignments visually. So even though they're visual alignments, they are very precise. Here, I've dragged in our dual band and our broadband masters. And the dual band now is the layer over the broadband. 
In the upper right center, you can see that I have set the composites option on the dual band master to screen. This would allow us to see the broadband master through the dual band. Then I dragged and rotated the dual band master to roughly align with the broadband master, using the horsehead nebula as a point of reference to help me do the basic alignment. Now, with the basic alignment done, we're going to become much more precise. I'm going to change the composites option on the dual band data to contrast negate. This will make the stars in the upper plate show up as points and the stars in the lower plate show up as disks or blotches. And now alignment becomes a game of centering the bullseyes on the targets. You can zoom into the extreme if you need to, zooming to the point where you can see the individual pixels, though that's rarely ever necessary. To accomplish a good alignment, work first at the center of the image, centering the dark dots of the stars from the upper plate with the disks from the lower plate. Zoom out and check the alignment at one side of the image and then the other. Move the stars back and forth and side to side or rotate the plates as needed. It's a little tricky because things on the outside of the plate move faster than things on the inside, so it can throw you off to you, get the knack of it. By checking one side of the plate and then the other, and making smaller and smaller adjustments to left and right and up and down movement and rotation, with a little practice, you can quickly zoom in on a perfect alignment that can barely be told from one done by the computer. All right, we're done. We'll zoom way in. How does that look to you? Do you see any problems with the alignment? I don't think so. If I slide the upper plate over, you can see the stars in the lower plate were perfectly aligned with the upper plate. We'll restore those stars and consider this entirely manual alignment perfect and done, leaving us with two perfectly aligned but separate masters to work with as layers. If aligning with the dynamic alignment tool in Pix Insight, when you're done, you may want to run dynamic crop on the discrete plates, which will give you perfectly matching cropped images that you can later use in layer-based developing. To do this, open the Dynamic Crop tool and select the sections that you want to crop. Let's say that we just want the Flame Nebula, so we're going to crop it out. I open up the Dynamic Crop tool, crop out the Flame Nebula on my reference image, and then drag the Action icon over to Plate 2. Here, an aligned crop will be actioned on the second plate. Then I can go back to my reference image, hit the check mark to action the dynamic crop on the reference image, and a perfectly aligned crop of the flame nebula will be cut out here too. If we superimpose these two images, we can see that they are perfectly aligned. We can then save these images, move them to a layer-based editor such as Affinity Photo or Photoshop, and edit the individual layers there and integrate them or composite them as we choose. Note that when running Dynamic Crop on the two plates in Pix Insight, they do not have to be physically aligned. I created some confusion in my video on taming dynamic range by physically aligning the three plates. I was just trying to show how you can test and make sure your alignments are good by snapping the plates together and seeing if everything, especially the stars, are aligned well. But the Dynamic Crop tool doesn't care where the plates are on the desktop. From its perspective, these two images have already been aligned and so a dynamic crop run on one plate will action in the same place on the other plate, regardless of where the other plate is on the desktop itself. We'll demonstrate this again by cropping out just the horse head from plates one and two. I select the reference layer, open the dynamic crop tool, and crop out the horse head on it. You can see the outcome perfectly aligns. For myself, I would execute my crops in Affinity Photo. The cropping tool is just much more powerful and it works across layers. Going back to the data we've been working with in Affinity Photo, I'm going to crop out the dual band and the broadband layers. I set my crop tool to a position that I want. I like that I can see both layers at the same time because ultimately I would be blending these layers so that the borders that you see between the layers would become invisible and the layers would become seamless thus making for a larger, more detailed and refined image. So I can adjust my crop, drag it around both layers simultaneously, rotate the entire image itself to get it to fit in just how I want it, and then execute the crop. So what if we had three masters and we wanted to align each of those, say, because each one of them represents data imaged with very different exposures? So each separate master needs to be preserved because it carries important qualities over into the final work. Well, I would still need to align these images to ultimately work with them in my layer-based editor. We could do this easily using the manual method in Affinity Photo that I showed you earlier, or we can accomplish it in Pix Insight using the dynamic alignment tool. So in this case, I've decided that my one second master will be my reference image. 
The other two masters will be aligned to the one second master. I'll open the dynamic alignment tool, select the one second master as image one, the reference, and select the five second master as image two, making it the image to be aligned. And then, just like before, I'll go ahead and select seven to 10 reference stars. Because these masters are already very close in alignment, the dynamic alignment tool does not get confused at all, even from the first star selection and identifies the correct star on the second image. Now, with enough stars selected, I'll go ahead and hit the check mark and action the dynamic alignment tool. In a moment, we'll receive an image called five second underscore registered. That image is perfectly aligned to the one second reference plate. We'll shrink that one and save it for use later as a layer in Affinity Photo. Now, we'll open our 20 second master and do the exact same procedure. By restarting the dynamic alignment tool, selecting the one second master as our number one reference, and selecting the 20 second master as our number two image to be altered. Then back on the number one reference, we'll select seven to 10 reference stars to help the dynamic alignment tool conduct a successful alignment, action the tool, and after a few seconds, it'll create another image named 20 second underscore registered. That 20 second plate will also be perfectly aligned to the one second plate. Now, the one second original reference and the five second registered and 20 second registered can be saved and then reopened in Affinity Photo or Photoshop and used as layers in whatever refined editing tasks you might have. There are other ways to go about aligning images. And with practice, you'll get better at picking and choosing the ones that are gonna work best for the task at hand. For myself, I tend to either manually align or rely on the dynamic alignment tool. Both methods are quick and easy, and I just choose whichever seems to be fastest according to whatever task I'm working on. But while simple, this is an exceedingly important tool because as you'll discover if you keep watching my videos, when shooting many targets, you're going to want to shoot multiple exposures and multiple settings varying either your exposure time or your gain or perhaps other settings. And you'll want to integrate those masters in much more creative ways than what's simply allowed by integrating them with PixInsight tools. To really bring out the full potential in your images, you'll want to turn them into layers that you can develop separately and blend and composite with the other layers creatively, which will allow you to maximize the potential of your telescope and camera. I've said it in previous videos, but I'll say it again. In my experience, the hardware that we use is far more capable than we think it is. And the barrier to bringing out the best in the data is usually improving our development skills. As always, thank you for watching. Now get out there and shoot the sky.